So Fahrenheit 451. Next to George Orwell's 1984, this single novel has to be the most regularly misquoted, misinterpreted, misconstrued, propagandized, and distorted book in the history of contemporary science fiction literature. Mind you, I love the book. In my opinion, it's Ray Bradbury's uh, crowning achievement. But even by Bradbury's own admission, between Michael Moore's stip-fuck-tastic miscommunication of its narrative motifs via the title of his 2004 documentary, not to mention every fuckwit college professor misrepresenting it via purposefully slanted curriculum as a totalitarian cautionary tale. The only thing more irreparably mangled than its core thematic content is presently wrapped around a parking meter with Nick Nolte splayed across the fucking dashboard. Uh, Fahrenheit 451 is not a novel about a totalitarian government curtailing the liberty of its populace, via socialized censorship. It isn't. It's a novel wherein the citizenry, faculties dulled by pulsating televised imagery and disposable comedic entertainment, outgrow the need for literature and the government simply takes the next logical step by censoring it. The people hand over their liberty willingly to the government, which consequently becomes totalitarian. It's an important distinction to make in a time where many of the very same bleeding hearts who, in the wake of tragedies such as the Sandy Hook and Aurora, Colorado shootings, continue to shriek that the government should regulate our our firearms more heavily than our automobiles, or even seize them outright, inexplicably whirl around on their shit heels and tell the government that they'll get their video games when they pry them from my cold, dead hands. In a perfect world. Look, the bastion of bullshittery that is Kotaku this past week took the opportunity to launch a Herculean harangue at the National Rifle Association, whose months-old rhetoric pertaining to the censorship of video games relative to people on the left, like Vice President Joe Biden and our very own President Barack Obama, has been tame as a motherfucking house cat by comparison. Let me make this perfectly clear, the NRA is in the motherfucking wrong in assigning digital entertainment even fractional blame for Newtown, and given that they released their very own shit piece of a PS2 game not but seven butt fucking years ago, it also happens to smack of hypocrisy, but make no mistake, where the individual liberty of gamers are concerned, the NRA are not particularly dangerous. In fact, we have an enemy in common. In the Citizens of California's ongoing effort to make the rest of America as much of a dystopian ass-backward moonscape as their own home state happens to be, California voters in 2012 re-elected a mendacious marionette by the name of Dianne Feinstein to U.S. Senate for the fourth motherfucking time, and less than a month ago this bag of shit emptied her contents. Video games act as death simulators, she purported, but where the rhetoric reached Brad Burian fever pitch was when she hinted later in the interview that Congress may be forced to, to take a direct regulatory, see censorship-tastic action to curtail the tide of video violence, even hinting that they were ready to do so right fucking now. Okay, mind you, this isn't one lone powerless voice or the half-wit chairperson of a special interest group like the NRA saying this. This fucking sea hag is the chairwoman of the Intelligence Committee. Mind you, having this woman chair any proceeding predicated on intelligence is like electing Charlie Sheen the Baron of the Chastity Foundation, but combining this with Barack Obama's formation of a clean video games task force this past January... It's abundantly clear that while Kotaku froths at the mouth and shrieks about gun nuts, the true enemy is constructing the gallows atop Capitol Hill. I mean, the NRA didn't even shoot their toothless mouths off on this issue until January 16th, a full week and some change after Vice President Joe Biden first began holding those McCarthy-esque hearings to ascertain the violent content of video game media and, and exploring the option of government-mandated censorship. I, where the fuck was the video game media there? I mean, we know where Kotaku was. Those grape-flavored Ramone reviews aren't going to write themselves after all, but we expect those motherfuckers to be asleep at the swatch. Where the fuck was IGN, okay? GameSpot, Polygon, Joystick. Every last fucking one covered the NRA story. Exactly two covered the Feinstein story. Listen the fuck up. It is not coincidence that the same people getting grabby with your guns are now fondling your fucking video games. Because once they get the one, they are coming for the fucking other. You don't get to hand the government authority beyond their province, in this case outlawing assault rifles, 
Which, given that the Second Amendment exists to protect the citizenry, not from a jewel thief, not from a grizzly bear, but as per Thomas Jefferson, from their own government, the only model of weapon we should be encouraged to own, and then cry totalitarianism when the government decides the next stop after it raids your gun cabinet is the fucking entertainment center. That's arguably even more hypocritical than the NRA whining about violent games seven years after it made a failed attempt at producing one. The dystopia of Fahrenheit 451 began with a populist tendering literature voluntarily to the government for incineration. They had no need of it, they said. And this, Rageaholics, is why we don't have a Bill of Needs. We have a Bill of Rights. I'm Razorfist. God fucking speed!